Hello, I'm Ingrid Sheffer and I'm a paediatric neurologist in Melbourne, Australia. I'd like to tell you about epilepsy genetics. It is a very exciting time in our field with an explosion in the discovery of epilepsy genes, particularly with the new molecular techniques such as whole exome and whole genome sequencing that are currently available. The area in which epilepsy genetics has had the most clinical impact to date is in the infantile onset epilepsies. This includes both the self-limited syndromes and the epileptic encephalopathies. The other specific test that I would like to touch on, because it is now part of routine clinical practice, is the molecular, molecular carrier type, which can be tested by SNP array or array CGH. Before selecting a genetic test, it is important to diagnose a patient's epilepsy syndrome. This is like putting together the pieces of a puzzle. One needs to consider the age of onset of a child and the initial seizure type, followed by the later seizure types that emerge, the developmental course of the child, any associated neurological abnormalities and other examination features, EEG and MRI findings, and finally, where known, the genes. And all of these together make up an epilepsy syndrome diagnosis. There are many epilepsy syndromes diagnosed now, and here you see just some of those that occur in the first year of life. There are many genes known already, and many more promise to emerge over the next few years. I'm just going to touch on one of the most well studied of the genetic epileptic encephalopathies, and one that is commonly seen, and that is Dravet syndrome. It begins at six months of age in a previously normal infant who presents with an episode of febrile status epilepticus. This is most commonly hemiclonic but may be generalised. Over the next six to 12 months, they represent with further episodes of febrile status epilepticus, and then between one and four years, other, gen other seizure types emerge, most commonly focal discognitive seizures, but also myoclonic and absence seizures and episodes of non-convulsive status epilepticus. The child's development is normal in the first year of life, but then slows, and most of the children have intellectual disability. Examination is usually fairly normal early in life, but then the child develops mild spasticity and eventually a crouched gait. The EEG is normal in the first one to two years, but then generalised polyspike wave is seen and often multifocal abnormalities. In this syndrome, the genes really make the final diagnosis. One needs the clinical picture, and then if one adds a genetic test, and that is a test of SCN1A, the gene encoding the alpha-1 subunit of the sodium channel, one finds that 75% of children and adults with Dravet syndrome have SCN1A mutations. Copy number variants are found in all of us with recurrent microdeletions and microduplications found on every chromosome as shown here. Many of these are considered benign variants found in the normal population. These copy number variants are tested for with a molecular carrier type which has 10 times the resolution of a routine carrier type. When this test is performed, it can be difficult to tell if a copy number variant is pathogenic. So one needs to start by defining the patient's epilepsy syndrome. Then one performs an array or the molecular carrier type looking for CNVs or copy number variants. Where a copy number variant is found, one needs to test the parents to see if it is de novo in the child, which means it is more likely to, path to be pathogenic. The next question is, is this a pathogenic CNV? If it contains a, a crucial gene such as CDKL5, it is more likely to be pathogenic. Alternatively, if it is very large and perhaps has 200 genes, it's also more likely to be pathogenic. The other issues are whether it has been previously reported in databases uh, in normal individuals, in which case it is probably not pathogenic, and whether it is reported in children with a similar phenotype. And all of these different points help you to decide whether it's pathogenic. And at the end of the day, I would encourage you to ask your friendly geneticist. Thank you for your attention.